Okay, so this is grade 8. This is a 9 for on chapter 6, 8, and 10. Integer sense, algebra sense, and fraction sense. So if you're looking at this video at a different day, uh, press pause, try these questions again. I'm sure you don't remember the answers. And see if the method that you used to get the answers was consistent with the method I show you. So the first three questions are integers. And they're all bed mass questions because they involve more than one operation. So in the first question, it says negative 8 take away 4 times negative 2. So negative 8 take away 4 times negative 2. So since 4 times negative 2 is the first thing I'm going to do, I know that that's negative 8. So I'm going to put it right there. And then negative 8 take away, instead of 4 times negative 2, it's going to be negative 8. Now once we have that first operation done, we have just subtraction left. And the easiest thing people do for subtraction is to keep the first integer the same, change it to addition, and use the opposite of the second integer. Uh, most of us do that. And negative 8 plus a positive 8 would be 0. Now, obviously, if you just thought of it, I have negative 8, and somebody takes away negative 8, I'd have nothing left. That also gives you 0. But no matter which way you do it, the answer to the first question is 0. In the second question, we have negative 3 times 4. That's one operation. Take away, which is a second operation. Negative 5 squared, which is your third operation. And in bed mass, uh, the first thing we're going to do is exponents. So I'm simply going to write down negative 3 times 4, take away whatever negative 5 squared is. Now remember, negative 5 squared means negative 5 multiplied by itself twice. So negative 5 squared is going to be a positive 25. Positive 25. Now I have multiplication and subtraction left. I'm going to do my multiplication first. Negative 3 times a positive 4 is negative 12. The last thing I have is negative 12 take away that positive 25. Keep, flip, change, and I end up with negative 37 as my answer. And the last question for integers says 10 take away 15. Now, a lot of people still think 10 take away 15 is a positive 5, but if you have $10 and somebody takes away $15 from you, not only do they take the 10 you have in your pocket, but you owe $5 for later on, it's a negative 5. 10 take away 15. Keep flip change. 5 negatives and 3 positives. You end up with negative 2. Your second line of your nifer is your multiplication or your fraction. So, excuse me. So, 3 quarters plus. First thing I'm going to do is the product of 1 half and 1 fifth. Multiply your numerators. 1 times 1 is 1. Multiply your denominators. You get 10. You get 1 tenth. So 3 quarters plus a half times a fifth is the same thing as 3 quarters plus a tenth. When you add or subtract fractions, you require a common denominator. The first or the lowest common denominator that both share multiples for, 4 and 10, would be 20. You can use 40. It just means you have to reduce your fraction in the end. Multiply both by 5 to create an equivalent fraction. The equivalent fraction to 3 quarters would be 15 out of 20. So if you got 3 out of 4 on the test, you get 75%. You get 15 and 20 on a test, you still get 75%. They're equivalent. And the equivalent fraction to 1 tenth would be 2 twentieths. Add your numerators, keep your denominator. The answer for question 4 is 17 twentieths. The middle question is simply a division question with a mixed fraction divided by a regular fraction. Generally speaking, when we use algorithms to solve uh, fraction questions, it's best to use improper instead of mixed. The rule is. Never divide fractions if you can avoid it, because it's much easier to multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of doing one and a quarter divided by three eighths, I'm going to do five quarters multiplied by the reciprocal of three eighths, which is eight thirds. Smart students will look to see if they can cross reduce. Here you can. Eight over four would reduce down to two over one. You don't have to do it, but it makes it easier because your numbers become smaller. Now that you have that cross reduced, 5 times 2 is 10, 1 times 3 is 3, 10 thirds is the same thing as 3, and a third. So both of those answers are correct, 10 thirds or 3 and a third. Question 6 is a oper order of operations, so change your mixed fractions to improper. For division, I'm going to change uh, division to multiplication. I have to say, what is the reciprocal of 4? Well, since 4 as a fraction itself is really 4 over 1, its reciprocal would be 1 over 4. Check to see if you can cross-reduce. You can't. Some people think you can do a reduction this way, but you can't. That would be side reduction, which is different than cross-reduction. 
So you can't cross reduce, which means 3 over 2 plus 3 over 32 would be the product of 3 eighths and a quarter. Your common denominator will be 32. Uh, and your equivalent fraction to this is 48 over 32. When you add those up, you get 51 over 32, which is your answer. Or, a better answer would be to convert it back to mixed. 1 and 19 over 32. Those two answers are the same. One's improper, one's not. Okay, your last set of questions are the ones that are probably freshest in your memory because we just had a test on them. But you have x divided by negative 5 minus 2 equals negative 3. The first thing you want to get rid of in two-step equations is your constant. You get x divided by negative 5 equals negative 1. Multiply both sides by negative 5, the opposite operation to division. And you get x equals a positive 5. Because negative 1 times negative 5 is in the next question, you have to say, well, this is the constant, but is it positive or negative? That's a positive 5. Some people think because this negative symbol is near it, it must make the constant negative, but it doesn't. It's a positive 5. And we see that best if we drew it. We would have 5 positives and 2 negative x's and a negative 13. So to get rid of that 5, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Over here, I'm going to have negative 18. Or 18. Negative 18. And over here... I still have a negative 2x. A lot of people write down a 2x instead of a negative 2x. Divide both sides by your coefficient, and x will equal 9. All right, and the last question is distributive property with algebra. So there's two ways you could do it. The first way was you could divide both sides by negative 5 and just have one group of x minus 1 equals negative 5. That's one way you could solve it from there. But for most of us, the better way to do it, or not the better way, but the more appropriate way, because that way you understand what it means, is to expand negative 5 groups of x minus 1. You'd have negative 5x, and you'd have a positive 5, because a negative 5 times a negative 1 is a positive 5. From here, it's just a two-step equation. Negative 5x equals 20. Divide both sides by negative 5, and your x value will equal negative 4.